Okay, let's start looking at some problems uh, concerning double integrals involving polar coordinates. Let's take example one here. Find the volume under the plane z equals 4 minus x minus 2y over the disk bounded by the unit circle centered at the origin. The unit circle centered at the origin. When they refer to disk, they mean the interior of the circle. Let's look at a quick drawing. Okay quick graph of the situation here. So you guys see here, this would uh, make like a prism-like thing and we're attempting to find the volume of that thing. Notice that the plane is positive for all values of x and y uh, in that disk. Okay? All right. Now that we'll start working it. Now that we have an idea of what the solid actually looks like, of which we're trying to find the volume, let's go ahead and see here because we're going to be integrating over this uh, unit circle centered at the origin, this is virtually begging for polar coordinates. Uh, let's go ahead and start thinking in terms of polar coordinates then. So my function, first of all, equals uh, z equals 4 minus x minus 2y. So let's go like this. z is a function of x and y being 4 minus x minus 2y. In order to trans, uh, translate that into polar coordinates here, you want to remember that x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. So our integrand here, which is the function of x and y, will now be this. 4 minus r cosine theta minus 2r sine theta, okay? So this will be our integrand, okay? And then let's go ahead and set up the integral here. This is actually going to be pretty easy to set up because the region over which we're looking would be a kind of polar rectangle. Now here's our integrand, okay? Now, I'm integrating, let's just say, for now, that's over R, and this is dA. I'm going to put this in there for a little quest here. That's differential area. But since we're going to be using polar coordinates here, what is dA? Do you remember? Yes, it's R dR d theta here. Okay? So let's write this out. r d r d theta. All right. Here, I think I'll pull this down here. All right. Now, what are our limits of integration here? Well, we're just integrating over the unit circle centered at the origin. So r is going everywhere, what? From, regardless of the value of theta, it's going from 0 to 1, because it's a unit circle right? Radius 1. And where's theta going? From 0 to 2 pi. So r is going from 0 to 1, and theta is going from 0 to 2 pi, and this would represent our volume, okay? Now we need to go ahead and go through and integrate this thing to get an actual numerical answer. So let's go ahead and do that first. So what I'll do is separately this time I'll integrate, uh, I'll start with the inner integral here. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Let's go the integral from 0 to 1. Now I'll distribute the r through. So this is what? Uh, 4r minus r squared cosine theta minus 2r squared sine theta dr. Okay, so just work in the inner integral first. Oops, sorry. All right, there it is. All right, now remember theta is being treated like a constant, right? So that means the cosine of theta and the sine theta are act, acting like constants. So we can actually integrate this really easy, easily using the, what, the power rule here. So punch up the power by one here and divide. So we've got what? 2r squared, this is what? Minus one third r cubed cosine theta, because that's acting like a constant, minus two thirds 
r cubed sine theta and r is going from 0 to 1 okay you can write r equals if you want to but I'll keep this in we can do it in our heads here 2 right when I evaluate it 1 minus 1 third cosine theta minus 2 thirds sine theta that's evaluated at 1 and then I would be subtracting what? What if I evaluate all this at zero? You see, I get zero, so I'd be subtracting zero from this. So I'll just stop right there. So there it is. Okay? Now that's the inner integral. It's the inside integral. Okay? I still have to integrate this result from what? With respect to theta from zero to two pi. So now I'll make my statement about uh, V is the integral from zero to two pi. Let's put this in here. 2 minus 1 third cosine theta minus 2 thirds sine theta d theta. Alrighty. Let's integrate these. Should be pretty easy here. Let's see. Integral of 2 d theta. So that would be what? 2 theta? Okay. Here. Uh, antiderivative of the cosine is the sine. So looking good. Okay. Here, antiderivative of minus sine is cosine, so we'll go like this. There's a plus sign on there. Okay, and then we're going from what? Zero to two pi. Let's stick in the numbers. Let's evaluate this at two pi. This would be what? Four pi. This would be the sine of two pi is zero, so it would be minus zero. Okay, cosine of two pi is one, so we would get plus two thirds. Okay, and then we're subtracting, evaluate this at zero, that would be zero. The sine of zero is zero. The cosine of zero is one, so that's, we get two thirds there again. And now you notice the two thirds will drop out when I take the difference, and my final answer is the volume of that solid was actually four times pi cubic units, whatever those were. Okay, so there's example one. Okay, let's do a second example here. Find the volume under the paraboloid four minus x minus two squared minus y squared over the region bounded by these two circles, x minus one squared plus y squared equals one x minus 2 squared plus y squared equals 4. These would be easy to actually uh, graph here, but I've already taken the graph from uh, Desmos. About the actual solid of which we are attempting to find the volume, let's take a quick peek at that here. Okay, This is actually the critter we're trying to find the volume of. So this is a frowning paraboloid. And then we've got, you notice these... Uh, the region that we're talking about over integrating is the region between these two circles. So it's, you see where I'm, I don't want to actually shade that in there, but you see where that is here? All right, so this is what it ends up looking like. Got to find the volume of that thing, okay? Once again, guys, notice since we're dealing with circles here, we're really going to think about using uh, polar coordinates. It seems like that would be a good thing to do, okay? Now, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead, and this is our function of x and y. This is going to be our integrand, right? Okay, this is our f of x, y. We need to translate that into polar coordinates. So let's go ahead and do that first. So let's move this aside. So z equals our f of x, y is equal to 4 minus the quantity x minus 2 squared minus y squared. And what I'm going to do, let's go ahead and move this over here. Let's go ahead and expand this and incorporate the negative sign throughout. So it's negative x squared. Uh, we've got a double negative in the middle term, so that's going to be plus 4x. Negative 2 squared is 4, but I've got the negative out front there. And then I'm subtracting y squared. Okay, now you guys notice the 4s cancel. And then I've got z equals, maybe let's lead with 4x. And then I've got minus x squared 
minus y squared. All right. Now this looks like uh, uh, something I want to translate into polar coordinates now. Okay. Now in polar coordinates, you remember that x is r cosine theta. Now here, I'm subtracting the quantity x squared plus y squared. x squared plus y squared is r squared, so we've actually got this for our integrand. So don't, this is a good formula to remember rather than translating it into sine and cosine and everything. It's easier to remember r squared is x squared plus y squared. Okay, so here, if I'll bullet that. That's going to be our integrand. Okay, now let's go ahead and think about the limits of integration here. Okay, the limits of integration for this, where r is going from and to and everything. Well, in order to do that, I'm going to have to think here about translating these two circles into polar coordinates, right? Now, their centers are not at the origin. If the center was at the, of the circles was at the origin, it would uh, make it much easier here, but the centers are obviously not at the origin. The center on the smaller circle is at uh, uh, Cartesian coordinates 1, 0, and the center here for the larger circle is at 2, 0 in terms of polar coordinates. So let's go ahead and rewrite these in terms of polar coordinates. Let's take this one. Let's take the smaller one first. So I've got x minus 1 squared plus y squared equals 1. This is going to be kind of similar to what we did just above here. Okay. I'm going to expand. So I've got x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus y squared equals 1. Now I see the x squared plus y squared. I remember again that is what? r squared. And then I've got minus 2x. Now I'm going to knock one off of both sides there so that we've got this situation. Okay. Now this is, I need to translate x into terms of polar coordinates. So that's what? x is r cosine theta. So I'm dealing with this. r squared minus 2r cosine theta equals 0. Let's go ahead and write this. This is not going to be my final answer here. People, I can actually have factored out an r here in, above. This is r times what? r minus 2 cosine theta equals 0. Maybe this is a better way to think about it. This means r is equal to 0 or what? r minus 2 cosine theta equals 0. So r equals 0 or r equals 2 cosine theta. Okay. Now, do you guys see that r equals 0? That would be what? The origin, right? Do you guys see I already get the origin here? What if uh, theta is, is, for example, pi over 2? 2 times the cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so I get the origin right here. So my point is, if I cast this thing out here and just consider this guy, then what? I have exactly the same set of points as I have right here. Now, you might have thought about doing what? Dividing r out on both sides here. But you're making an assumption that what? r is not equal to 0 when you divide that r out on both sides. OK? So I was a little more explicit about here. But again, if you guys want to double check and just graph this on Desmos, this is actually the smaller circle here. It's actually the smaller circle r equals 2 cosine theta. Okay. Now, before I go on here and talk about the second, the larger circle, which is going to be really similar to this situation here, I want to think about where theta is going from and to when I trace out that actual circle here. When I'm right here at this point, theta equals 0. Okay, theta equals 0. r is equal to 2. I'm 2 units from the uh, origin. And then as theta increases, cosine is decreasing, and I come in here, at theta equals pi over 2, I'm at the origin, right? Like I mentioned earlier. If theta is pi over 2, I get uh, r equals 0, I'm at the origin. And then when theta keeps increasing, I get negative values for r, so that I'm actually, what, plotting points backwards like this. For example, when this is, uh, um, say, 3, uh, 
let's see, what would that be? 3 quarters pi. I actually have a negative value over this way. Do you guys see what I mean? So it's, I guess I don't mind writing on this. Let me go around like this. It's tracing it out this way so that when theta is pi, actually, what's the cosine of pi? It's negative 1, so 2 times negative 1, I get that point again, okay? So I actually trace this out. My point is I'm tracing out that entire circle when theta goes from 0 to pi, okay? Just from 0 to pi, I trace out that entire circle, okay? Now, this situation is going to be very similar here. I'm going to just sort of tell you what the answer is on the second one. It'd be good practice for you to just try this here. The only difference between the two is that is what? Instead of one, that is two right there. Okay? And how is that going to change the situation here? All right? Go ahead and try that yourselves. I claim the bigger circle is simply this. And here, theta is going to be from 0 to pi or also. Okay? All righty. So these are actually my circles here. Okay? Now you only want, to, only want to trace these out once. So that's why I'm going from 0 to pi. Okay? Now, let's go ahead and set up our integral to find the volume here. Okay? So we're going to have double integration here. Let's see. Our integrand was what? There. There's our integrand. So we've got 4 r cosine theta minus r squared. Okay. There's the integrand. And then I got what? dA, right? Differential area. But that's going to be r dr d theta when you're talking about polar coordinates. Okay. Now I'm integrating with respect to r first. And if you come back to the picture, where is r coming from, uh, going from and to? Okay, so if I trace this out here, that's supposed to be straight, right? Okay, where's R going from and to? Remember, we're just talking about a region of integration being, uh, what, between the two circles. So R is going from whatever that R value is on this smaller circle out to the larger R value. Okay, so R goes from here to here. Okay, well, what's the R value right there? The R value right there is... 2 cosine theta. So that's the lower limit here, 2 cosine theta. What's the upper limit? Well, in the big circle, that is 4 cosine theta. Okay? You guys notice now, let me just mention, go back to basics here. When I work the inner integral, I'm going to get what? I'm going to end up with a function of theta, right? And then I'll integrate that with respect to theta. Now we just mentioned here, theta is going from 0 to pi. So this is, you got to get the integral, right? You got to get the definite integral written down right, otherwise nothing else matters, right? The, the problem's completely blown if you don't get this right. All right. Now let's work the inner integral here, okay? Now don't forget you're multiplying with r there. So I've got 4r four, four squared cosine theta minus r cubed dr and r is going from 2 cosine theta to 4 cosine theta okay let's see what we get here okay integrating with respect to r that would just be what uh, 2 oh no wait I'm sorry 4 thirds r cubed cosine theta minus one quarter r to the fourth and then r is going from two cosine theta to four cosine theta like that okay all right now make sure I get this right here all right now I gotta substitute these in here Okay, I've got four thirds. Okay, now r is what? Four cosine theta. So this is going to be four cosine theta cubed cosine theta minus one quarter 
4 cosine theta to the fourth. The square brackets are here. I'm subtracting off that. 4 thirds 2 cosine theta cubed cosine theta minus 1 quarter 2 cosine theta to the fourth. Okay, now it looks like we have some arithmetic ahead of us here. Okay, and some arithmetic to do. All right, let's uh, maybe I'll squeeze this in at the bottom. Uh, 4 cubed is 64 times 4 is 256 over 3. Do you guys notice I'm getting what here? I'm getting cosine to the fourth on everything, so I think I'll do this. Okay, it's going to be a bunch of numbers, then cosine to the fourth at the end there. Okay, let's see. I've got 4 to the fourth divided by 4, so that's just 4 cubed. So that's what? Uh, 64, so that's minus 64. We've got a negative here on this thing. 2 cubed is 8 times 4 is 32. So it looks like I get minus 32 thirds. I've got a double negative, which is positive. So I've got plus here. 2 to the 4th is 16 divided by 4 is 4. And that's cosine to the 4th. The theta. Let's see, that looks like what? Uh, 224 minus 60. So that would be what? Uh, 44 thirds cosine to the 4th. Ah. So, that's the inner integral here. Okay? Now I've got to do what? I've got to integrate that uh, d theta from 0 to pi. Alrighty. Let's do that. So I'll make a statement V, or a volume, is going to grow from 0 to pi, 44 thirds cosine to the fourth theta d theta. Okay, now let's see if you remember anything about uh, integrating cosine to the fourth. Do you remember from uh, Calc 2, if you see an odd power on sine or cosine and you're integrating, you smile. But if you see an even power, you frown because you've got a lot more work to do. With a, If there's an odd power, you could use just a little trick involving the Pythagorean identity. And it ends up being a polynomial function in sine or cosine. This is a little bit worse. We have to have what uh, a different identity we have to use here. Okay, so let's go ahead and just remind you here, if you remember this, cosine squared uh, of an angle, I'll just call it A here. Okay, cosine squared A is what? 1 plus cosine double the angle over 2. Okay, remember that? Okay, so that would mean cosine squared theta is 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2. Now what I'm going to do is square this to get cosine to the fourth. Now if I square this, I would get 1 plus 2 cosine 2 theta plus cosine squared of 2 theta all over 4. Okay. And that would be 1 quarter plus 2 fourths is really a half cosine 2 theta. That's going to be easy to integrate. Plus a quarter cosine squared of 2 theta. Okay. Well, wait a minute. Cosine squared of 2 theta. I'd have to come up my formula up here and replace A by what? 2 theta. And I would get 1 plus cosine 4 theta all over 2. Okay, let's do some quick arithmetic here, combining like terms. I've got 1 fourth plus uh, an eighth, it looks like, so that would be what, 3 eighths? Okay, plus I have 1 half cosine 2 theta plus it looks like 1 eighth cosine 4 theta. So all that work just to what? Rewrite cosine to the fourth 
in a form that we can easily integrate. Okay, easily integrate. Let's go ahead and try this. Okay, so the volume, I'm gonna go ahead and put the 44 thirds just outside. We're integrating from zero to pi, three eighths plus one half, blah, blah, blah. I shouldn't say blah, 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 I should say etc. right? It's much better if you use Latin, etc. Okay. All right, let me show you a quick, uh, well, let me show you something that would be, if, if I'm actually working this problem, I get 3 eighths theta. I would see here when I integrate that I'm actually gonna get a sine of two theta going from zero to pi. I guarantee that'll zero out. Same thing here, that's gonna zero out, okay? So I could see here that the answer is gonna be uh, 44 eighths times pi and then reduce here. But for the sake of completeness, I will go ahead and have you guys, I'll work out the details that is, okay? That'd be 1 32nd sine of four theta from zero to pi. And now, when we actually evaluate this, we get 44 thirds, 3 eighths of pi. This is zero, like I was saying, this is zero. Okay. And then the whole thing evaluated at zero is zero. So we're getting 44 eighths um, pi, which is really by take out the fourths, 11 halves pi. So the volume of that crazy thing, where is that picture now? The volume of that crazy thing is 11 halves pi. Okay, so that's the volume. Alrighty, so forced us to remember some um, identities and stuff from calculus too. Right? Okay, let's do one last example for this video. Uh, find the volume of the sphere of radius A. Okay, let's get a formula for that. Um, first thing I'm going to do is think about taking my sphere of radius A and centering it at the origin. Uh, that Obviously, the volume of the sphere is independent of its actual location. So let's locate it in an easy place. Let's have that center at the origin. The equation of the sphere then, the surface of the sphere, would be what? x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals a squared, the radius squared, because this is just basically comes from the distance formula. Okay, now we're going to think of it this way. We're going to think of z as a function of x and y. Now you'd have an upper surface solving for z here. You would have z as the positive square root of a squared minus x squared minus y squared. So that would give you the upper part of the sphere. You'd have a lower part of the sphere the surface anyway, z equals what? The negative square root, okay? Now, if we think about this, where we ended up uh, projecting that sphere into the xy plane, we would end up with this region r, which is what? The disk centered at the origin with radius a, okay? So that's bounded by that circle of radius a centered at the origin in the xy plane. Okay, we write less than or equal to because we're including all the interior points, right? Now, if I was to do what? Uh, divide this up, thinking in terms of Cartesian coordinates for the moment, then I would have what? Uh, differential volume would be what? The distance between points on the surfaces here, which is two times the square root of a squared minus x squared minus y squared times what? dA, so that would be either what? dx, dy, or dy, dx, depending on what order we wanted to actually integrate in the end. But our integral for the volume would be what? V, it would be integrating over the, what? That disk centered at the origin. Here's what? The height of any of those uh, uh, thin rectangular um, regions that you would get, okay? dA, okay, there you go, okay? This is not the best way to do it. 
you can actually work it this way, but you would have to use, uh, you know, well, a coordinate, so you'd have to use some trig substitutions and stuff and go dx, dy, or something like that. It's going to be pretty ugly. Once again, because we're integrating over uh, 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 something that has a boundary that's going to be very easy to express in polar coordinates, I'm going to go to polar coordinates here. Okay? Now, let's rewrite this thing in, in polar terms then. Okay, V. Okay. All right. This is going to be very easy here. I'm going to be go, going 2 square root of A squared. Now, what's... I'm subtracting x squared plus y squared. There's a single quantity. x squared plus y squared is r squared. Okay? Now, I'm thinking of dividing it up in a polar way. So you think of, what, a bunch of differential polar rectangles. Instead, those have differential area, what, r, d, r, d, theta. So we're going to write it that way instead of dx, dy, or dy, dx. Okay? Okay. Now we're working over this. Okay? That uh, disk centered at the origin with radius a. a is positive here. Where's r going from and to all the time? From 0 to a. And then we're going all the way around that circle centered at the origin. So you can see we're going from 0 to 2 pi. Okay? From 0 to 2 pi. So there's the critter. Okay, let's go ahead and work this out here. This actually doesn't look too bad, does it? All right, let's work out the inner integral. All right, what would you do there? Maybe you would do this. You'd use a substitution. U equals a squared minus r squared. Differential changes in U would be what? Negative 2r dr. So that means 2r dr would be negative du. Okay. So this integral here now looks like this. Well, we've got 2r dr which is what? Negative du. Okay. Okay, put that in there. What would this be? That would be actually what? u to the one-half power. All right. Okay. What are the limits of integration? Well, we start here with what? r is equal to 0. If r is equal to 0, then that means a would be, or u would be a squared. And then it goes up to r equals a u would be a squared minus a squared, which is 0. Okay, that negative sign there can actually be used to just change the limits of integration from 0 to a squared. Instead, u to the 1 half du. Well, that's easy. Let's just use the power rule. u to the 3 halves, and then put your 2 thirds out front, going from 0 to a squared. You guys can see that's 2 thirds a squared to the 3 halves minus 0. That's 2 thirds a to the third power. Now that's the inner integral. Okay. So that's we got that done with that. To find the volume of the whole thing, I guess I can squeeze it in at the bottom. We'd be integrating from 0 to 2 pi, 2 thirds a squared d theta. And you can see that's going to be 2 thirds a squared 2 pi minus 0, which is 4 thirds. That's supposed to be cubed, sorry. That's 4 thirds pi a cubed. So the volume of a sphere is what? 4 thirds pi a cubed. So there you go.